Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is part two of the reply to just choose better. Gentlemen, there's a role that is played in this. I was going to record on this too, but I figured it for the sake of brevity and giving you uh, shorter videos, I would break this up and include this uh, portion in this separate video. Base Pluto said in his own uh, upload that he put up before I finished my recordings without being interrupted. And I quote, even men condition you. Now in our community, it is the old nigger simps, the old fools that do this. Every old man ain't no fool. I'm simply saying that it is the ones that are old and foolish that have done this. They themselves were probably conditioned. I don't particularly care why. They themselves were probably conditioned though, but they didn't analyze. And therefore they couldn't pass down anything better to us. My father almost fell victim to that, but he seems to have wised up. There was a time my brother was going to tell me something similar. He wised up. My brother, unaware that I had an idea as to someone I might marry, at the time, he once said to me, look, man, just, bruh, just go on down to Brazil and uh, pay for it and dig them out. And see, the thing was, I was a father at this point. I mean, I was a, several years a Muslim. I had just ended my second marriage um, to a woman that otherwise was great. And then, um, then he had the gall to tell me this. He interrupted me in the middle of my sentence to tell me this, as if to say that was simplified. Then I said, look, you're not going to tell me to do something that I would shoot my daughters for doing. If one of your nieces catches a flight down to Jamaica, and I know about it, going for the wrong reasons, don't you think I'm gonna be waiting back stateside with a pistol? I'm not saying to kill, but probably shoot them in the foot or something. I mean, if I'm feeling merciful, I'm going to tase them. That's if I'm feeling merciful. Because it's a flogging that is a penalty for unmarried uh, fornication and death is the penalty for married adultery if you can prove that somebody did either one. They're hard to prove. But I told him, you know, I don't even want my son catching a flight down to Brazil and just paying for it, per se. Men have to pay anyway. So why pay to share? So, because uh, the thing is, when you pay to share, somebody's going to pay less, and you're going to you're going to be insulted. You are being insulted at some point. You pay, and you have to pay to share. At the end of it all. So anyway, old fools in our community have taken these notions and they've said these things and, and conditioned us, that is very true. They oftentimes, if they sit down and think about it, they come to an understanding. Now, my father saw some men go through some nasty divorces where they had to do certain things to, find, to wind up not having to pay alimony or they wound up having to pay it. And one of the things my father realized was that uh, that the game was pretty much rigged. And he stopped telling me after that point the things he previously would tell me. I got mixed messages even from my own father. He's a boomer. But then he stopped. Then he began to say, well, son, at one point he said, you'll notice women. You'll notice them. But don't do anything that you would be ashamed of. Now, he told me this at a time in my life when I was still capable of feeling shame. And I'm glad that I didn't take those punches to the head before that advice. At this point, it's been you know, decades since I've lost that sensation of shame and embarrassment, but that doesn't mean I can't feel guilt. I know when something's right or wrong. I just can't particularly care what others think about it. 
So I'm lucky in that regard. But I still can remember, I can still take the lesson and practice it before I lost that sensation of shame. And therefore, it's, it helped me out. Don't do what you would be ashamed to do. And I would be, at that age, I would have felt ashamed to do anything for them that they would not do for me. And so therefore, it taught me a certain way to act. And while I spent most of the time single, I can say that I spent very little of the time being taken advantage of. But when I was in relationships, that was definitely what was going on. Because looking the way I do, simply put, women have this idea in mind, this guy's to be taken advantage of. And if they're not aware of it, they still have it in their subconscious mind and they act on it. Now, my man from the childhood neighborhood, Brick is his name. One of the best boxers uh, in our state. 6'2", I think. Uh, he was 6'2", at age 16, I think. 6'2", weighed 200, bench pressed 400. He saw a completely different side to the same ladies. I would have thought back then he must be making this up if I didn't know him to be an honest person that just doesn't have a reason to lie. But now looking back, I simply realized he just simply put had a very, he got to see a very different side based on uh, his physicality. Now he was a nice guy. But the thing was, nobody ever could whoop his behind. They just couldn't do it. And he never started fights either. But you just, you couldn't beat him up. So he had nice looking ladies being possessive of him and jealous behind any attention another woman might get from him. Things like that. I didn't see that. Certainly not if they were attractive. But if he didn't say, man, he did not say to me, man, just settle for what you can get. And he also didn't say the opposite. Kick them all to the curb. He said, listen, I can tell you what I've been through. You could, but I can't tell you what you have to do. Because I, I know that women don't react the same way to every guy, so I don't know what to tell you. And you know what? Now at this point, I can say to you, gentlemen, that you've been taught to so-called choose better, not only by ladies, no, you've been given this excuse, you have been given this even by older men that you may know, whether they're relate, related to you or you just know them. Understand that there is a certain type of man, and I want you to stop and think about what they all have in common. What they all have in common is they're going to put accountability on you, but because they are prone to take accountability as men, prone to, that means they will even assign to men the accountability and responsibility for things that are beyond our control. And that's altogether different. I want y'all to keep that in mind. They will gladly assign to you the responsibility for things you did not have control over. And one thing you don't have control over, for the most part, is how women see you. Because I've, some things you can control and some things you can't. But we don't even understand at a young enough age what influences the different ways that they see us. And as a matter of fact, one of the tragedies of modern day high schools is that they keep you so busy with the work you need to be doing to graduate that you don't have time to actually stop and think about these things that influence the way that women see you. Now, women don't have to stop and think and study this stuff because they're already being told at a young age. It is the men who have to come to understand this, but it's very difficult to be academically responsible in high school and figure this out. Matter of fact, it's damn near impossible. And I know because there were times I would even listen to some of the older men and it would say, man, you need to just be worried about your schoolwork. OK, well, how about both? I mean, if you know this stuff, why don't you spit it out so that I don't have to try to figure it out on my own while I'm also trying to figure out these quadratic equations for math class? And you know what? I'm glad I had that attitude. I'm going to tell you all straight away like this. When it's all said and done. Gentlemen, you're going to have to face, uh, unfortunately, older men that are going to tell you this stuff. And you're probably going to be around them more than you will be women. And that's why it is that you're going to have to have an, an iron will. 
Because older men aren't completely stupid and inexperienced compared to us, they've been around longer. But the one thing in life that men have not been able to figure out until recently has been women. They have not been able to figure that out. They just think they figured it out in comparison to you because they've been around longer. And it's true, they have. They may know certain things that women want, ways they won't respond. But keep this in mind, when you look for someone, understand that you don't need to avoid the one who's strong, the lady who's strong-willed and independent and a champion and a leader in some talent or field because of the way that you are. That's not why. It's not because of your insecurity. You need to avoid those ladies because of the way that ladies are. Women have talents, and that's great, but when they've got these talents and they become leaders in something, they tend to think that, you know what, that gives me the right to lead at home. And the funny thing is that when they can lead at home, even if even if you don't, you just don't have to argue with them because your life is streamlined and you don't have, you got your life simple the way you want it and you just don't have to get involved in a lot of drama and conflict. <laughs> because of that, they will sit back and look at you and they will say, he's not a real man. He doesn't have conflicts. He doesn't have drama. I, I don't have to, he doesn't have to argue with me about the way we're going to do a particular thing. He can just do it himself. That's how they view it. If you argue with them, you lose. If you don't argue, you lose. But especially when you don't argue and they're independent thinkers and they've got their own talents and ways to earn money and something for which they're getting accolades at work outside the home, then you really lose if you don't argue or if you do. It doesn't matter. See, what I'm getting at is that you could respect their mind, their talents, their intellect, as well as want them draws, the tits and ass and all that. You, a matter of fact, you should be able to do so if you're going to take her into your life like that. Because she has to do that for you to take her in, take you into her life, right? And I've always said you've got to have comparable standards for them to meet. Well, guess what? The problem is that once they meet them, you've got to remember that it's not you that's the problem in terms of how you're going to assess them. It is them. They are the problem in terms of how they're going to assess you. That's where the trouble comes in. They're looking at you like what's wrong with you. So if they're aggressive, assertive, opinionated, and you're with them, you don't have to be a pushover for them to think and view you as a pushover. That's what I want you to understand. You need to avoid them like that not because you're insecure. You need to avoid them when they're like that because they're going to be the ones that are going to misjudge why you even are still with them. You see, their standards are already a lose-lose situation from the very beginning, and that's what I want us to understand and remember. That's what I want us to... I want us to start off with that premise. You can commit to one with the intention to stay as long as she will keep you. You cannot commit with the intention that you're going to stay for the rest of your life. You can't commit with that because she ain't yours. You're not hers either. But she ain't yours. She's going to change the way she feels at some point. It's just your turn in many cases. And there's a, the way that that won't happen is if you get with, let's say you get with someone who is a virgin and that's it. That's it. That's, that's all there is to it. Or maybe if you've been around the block and you got, a, you got a lot of miles and a lot of notches on your dingling, more than, you know, you got a body count higher than hers and somehow she can tell, that may also be the case. That's a possibility too. But uh, I don't know how many guys can actually get body counts higher than these women can. I'm just not so sure about that. Um, so... If that is a, you know, if you can do it, then sure. But I, I just don't know. If that, how often that really happens in real life, I, I don't know. I just know that those are the only two ways. And one of them is, a, was, is as rare as it is, it's more possible than the other. And that is when you find one that's a virgin, even then, she may not want you if you are one. Especially so in the West. You're going to have to deal with that too. It is a serious problem. They're not playing games with you. 
what you got to understand is that one of the reasons we don't get to just simply choose better, and this is something we need to tell these old fools about, is that the very things they don't want, they keep on trying to find in the men they do. They keep looking for the things in the men that they do want. But they're looking for the things they don't want in the men they want. They want the one that won't settle down, and they want to settle him down and domesticate him. Then they'll leave when they do. That's just one example. They want the one that's emotionally unavailable. Then they want him to become emotionally unavailable and vulnerable to them, and they will leave if he does. So the very things they complain about not getting are the things that will make them leave if they get them. And this is why I say that it is a, it's not even just a game, it is a war. Because now when they do leave, if they got the commitment out of you in front of the state, of course they're going to leave and take everything they can take. And that's part of why I would say the only reason you should marry is if you don't have much. And I know a lot of self-improvement say a lot of self-improvement uh, fans would say you shouldn't be even thinking about it if you don't have this, that and the other. I would say, no, not really. Once you get all of that, that's when you should be absolutely refuse to commit. Absolutely. You can commit personally, but to commit in front of the state where they can take it when they leave and they decide they're not going to stay committed. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. See, they're always offering most of us exactly what we don't want. Their biggest weight. Their most children from other men's kids. Their worst habits, their worst emotional states, their lowest maturity and highest immaturity. Their flightiness. They're offering these things to the majority of normal men. The same things they will not take from you, they're offering to you. Understand that. So... Why do we owe them a commitment when we have all the resources that they want? It's a war. And, and the, the psychological aspect of this war, the goal of this war is to get you to feel like you must offer them exactly what it is they want and nothing else. And they must offer you nothing that you want. Unless, of course, you've overpaid for it and maybe not get it then, even then. And then say that's just the way it goes. That's, that's the way the game is. You must settle for what they hand you, and they have the right to demand more than you even have. And it is these old men that have verified this to us when we were young. And this is why men my age and men younger are not staying with these women. And why these women ain't staying with these men. These are the reasons. These old men always got all kinds of stuff to talk. Always. I don't mean every old man, but these old fools, the ones that tend to have the most to say, because it's easy to just repeat foolishness. The truth may be difficult to explain. So that's where we're at. When they get to talking about, well, look, young blood, you need to know this about women and know that about women and you need to provide and protect. Um, that's, that's when you say, no, 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 absolutely not. Mm mm. I mean, yeah, I need to be able to provide and protect, but that don't mean I need to extend that ability to the benefit of every woman. Absolutely not. Though if, I'm, if I'm going to give her what she wants, I'm going to get what I want from her. No attitude, no interruptions, no immaturity. And see, when you simply have those standards, you've already eliminated most of them. And that's what Kevin Samuels has been getting at and telling these women. And letting them know, look, the fact is, these high-value men actually outnumber uh, you high-value women that deserve them. If you really want to know the truth. So you're getting used for that which you do have because you have nothing else to offer. You won't be high-value and you insist on a high-value man. While you offer nothing in exchange and in return. And you think because of your careers that you're high value as wives. And he gets down to it. He said to one, he got her to say, to admit she wanted to be taken care of. And he said, oh, okay, that's it. Now let me help you with that. What I'm saying is when they talk like that, you look and see what they got because if they want to be taken care of, what about you are they going to take care of? And they're not told they have to do any of that. And that's why it is I look at them and I say, no, 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 no. I look at these old men who are trying to adjust and telling us that we need to adjust our very nature for the way that they have been corrupted. 
and they would never even adjust the way they've been corrupted for our very nature that's not even harmful to them. They would never do that. Not in the West, especially not when they're attractive. So sit down and say to these old men, listen, if I have to look like this and I've got to have this and do this and be this, why is it that they don't have to look at least like this and pull a picture of a, a normal but, but, but attractive lady, not a celebrity. Say, why is it that they don't have to at least look like this and be in this kind of shape in exchange for all these things they want from me? And in exchange for all the reasons they could just decide they don't want to stick around. That is their right to do. What is the reason? If I'm wrong for leaving them, <laughs> except in extreme cases, then why is it okay when they just decide out the blue that they're not going to stick around? And then you would look at me and so I can see why she left you once they look like this, even if I have to look like this over here. Because see, I'm not telling you this, this for any reason other than that you got young cats listening. And if young cats can see guys in our middle ages, our, our 20s, 30s, and early 40s, stomp these guys older than that, they're still gonna look and say, well, I mean, old man might be older but the young guy stomped him so I gotta go with what the young guy said see it's not about us proving them wrong for our egos it's about these younger guys seeing the fact that these older men just got brainwashed and tricked and just accepted it and never thought to apply it in the reverse that's that's what it's really about and that's why it's so important that we have the right response comprehensively to them saying, well, just choose better. You don't need to only need to know the response to tell these women if young guys are looking. We need to also know the response to tell these old nigga fools when these young guys are looking. That's also important. Matter of fact, that's even more important. Because the young guys, as far as they know, have a reason to listen to the older men. And when it comes to many things in life, we all have a reason to listen to these older men. But when it comes to this part of life, which is one of two most important parts of life there are, we have every reason to not listen blindly. There was a time when I was in seventh grade, I would have been better off not even listening to my father. And I did not. And I don't regret it because later on, he started to give me red pill bits of knowledge before I even knew what a red pill was. It's just it was in bits and pieces. And I got the full picture later on from YouTube. That was him. I probably would have died of a heart attack or a stroke had I not gotten those bits and pieces of him from him at first. I once came into some extra money and he said, look, I know you're going to use it on your kids, but you ain't got to tell your wife you got it. Don't tell her because you got to have something they don't know you have. And I said, OK, I agree that. Appreciate that. And I used it for the kids, but I did not tell her that I came into that. Because truth be told, I never should have married her in the first place, but I had no way of knowing. And one of the reasons I had no way of knowing was because there actually was no better to choose in the first place. I'm not saying they didn't exist. I'm simply saying they were told to never take a normal man. Never accept a normal guy. I don't even mean below average. Just, just a normal man. A normal good man. They were trained to never, you know, don't take a normal good man. Especially within our community. Add to that an unrecognizable appearance and it was already stacked. And so when my mother said something about you, uh, about me not choosing better, I had to stop her. And I was going to say to her, there was nothing better to choose, to be honest with you, because I was trained to stay within our race. But we got interrupted. And so I know when I, the next time I go back into the States and I visit, she will bring it up because she's done it every trip. And I just have to make sure that we don't get interrupted this time so I can say to her, what do you mean choose better? It wasn't out there. And it's not, it wasn't out there for Mac, friend of mine. It ain't out there for Dark. It wasn't out there for Pinky. It wasn't out there for Snap. It wasn't out there for Brick. It wasn't out there for any of us. What do you mean choose better? We were the better choice that they refused to make if they were even so much as decent to look at. That's why there's not going to be a black community in two more generations. 
And that's not something the men ever had control over. Thanks again for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum. And black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.